Make it, make it, T Truth Frequency Radio. He has fixed the earth firm and immovable. Welcome, friends. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Secrets of Build here on Truth Frequency Radio. And as always, I thank all of you for taking the time to join us this evening. I'm honored to have as special guests both Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent. Patricia, are you there? Yes, I am, Zen. Thank you for having me. Uh, That's a great honor. I appreciate you joining us. And I appreciate both of your willingness. Mark, are you there, brother? I am here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent. Well, you guys have been very busy as always, but especially so with uh, doing the recent Canadian Flat Earth Conference. Uh, Before we go into kind of reviewing what occurred and what went down up there, uh, if you would, Patricia, give out your website, your contact, anything you'd like to share, um, YouTube channels, those kind of things. Sure, Zen. I have a YouTube channel, no website, but the channel is Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. And uh, if anybody wants to contact me, my uh, email address is miss, M-I-S-S, steer, S-T-E-E-R-E, at gmail.com. I also have a Facebook community page called Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. So pretty much that's it. Excellent. And what about when uh, the shows that you guys do together? We do those on Wednesdays, almost every Wednesday, and that is on my Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes channel. And we have a name for it within the channel name. We call it The Secret Show. It's Actually, secret. for a, <laughs> almost like a joke in a way, but it, that's just the name we've picked for it. Right on. I like it. Mark, how about you, brother? I uh, best way to get a hold of me is just go into Google or YouTube and type in Flat Earth Clues. And that'll eventually lead you to my channel, which is just my name, Mark Sargent. And I also have a show here on Truth Frequency Radio on Tuesday nights called Strange World, where it's a dedicated flatter show. Right? That's all I do is I talk about it all the time. And so between this show, between the show on uh, Truth Frequency and YouTube, no problem finding me. Excellent. What about the enclosed world? Are, are you still doing I, I am. Enclosedworld.com is out there. It's more of a placeholder right now than anything else. It mirrors a lot of the YouTube content. And from there, there's a couple forum boards, and it's it's a work in progress. We we recently changed webmasters for enclosedworld.com. But the rest of my contact information is on literally every, and I have over a 1,000 videos out there um, on, in the description box of every video I make. And the just the channel description is my full phone number, my address, and my email. So easy, easy, easy to get a hold of me. Excellent. All right. Well, before we go to the conference, I wanted to ask you both of you uh, because I know you have the you know as far as a pulse on what's going on in mm-hmm. flat Earth and flat the, the community. Uh, what kind of interesting, strange stories or any um, current happenings or events or people uh, coming out um, as proponents of Flat Earth or against anything of that nature? Mark, let's start with you. And then we'll- <laughs> <laughs> wow. Strange it's, stories. Let's ask Mark. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my bread and butter right there. Right. Uh, Lots of things. It's been a little while since. How, how long has it been? A few months since I've been on the show. Yeah. Uh, yeah okay. Uh, uh, so we, we you and I probably November conference actually around there. Oh wow! Has it been? Has it been that long? No, no. It's we. I've been on after that. Yeah, maybe yeah, a little bit. A little bit after that. Right. Right. Um. So we never talked about the salt and sea test or anything that was going on yeah. down there. Yeah. Uh-uh. Okay. And Patricia actually should chime in every once in a while. Oh, yeah, because, sure, I will. Yeah, Because, absolutely. boy, we're going back in time. Now, yes, we are. Right. Well, actually, it, again, uh, flat earth years are kind of like cat years. <laughs> they, a, a lot happens in in a year of flat earth, and, and it seems like so long ago that Patricia and I will we'll start, we'll start going all the way back in Toronto. where Now, that uh, seems like that was years ago. And it, it, was a- it was April. Yeah, I know. Weird. 
the end of April. I hope actually. I'm not physically aging at this level <laughs> that flat earth what? goes by. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Young whippersnapper, I remember flat earth. Yeah, <laughs> right. it, it, it was, okay, so what happened was at the end of 2017, they finished shooting the documentary, uh, the, the first documentary out that was released uh, in April of this year. It is called Behind the Curve, and you can find it at behindthecurvefilm.com. And so they they shot they finished the the principal shooting in in November at the conference in Raleigh and then they spent the next three months or so editing and then they submitted it to various film festivals and the first one that was picked up was Toronto Hot Dogs and that was going to be the world premiere so Patricia and I were invited to come up to it and we went we flew up to Toronto which was a beautiful time of year to go a beautiful city. I'm, I'm glad I wasn't there in the winter. And we got to see it twice. You know, it has not, it is not officially released yet. It is still in the film festival circuit right now. So we saw it once privately in the hotel room of the producers, the director and, and the producers that shot it. And then we saw it a second time on the big screen in one of the major theaters in downtown Toronto. And it was a lot of fun. So anyone that wants to check it out, the trailer's out there called Behind the Curve. And um, Patricia is not a big fan of the title, and I, I can understand why. Uh, well, we didn't is... pick the title. The title no. was picked out long after all of the filming was done. And even the actual concept for what the film was going to turn out to be was unknown to those of us who were in it. The right. people that filmed us just basically filmed us doing things, and we figured yeah. that they would put it all together uh, in some form later and later we realized it was going to be a story about the people behind flat earth right. as opposed to scientific experiments and, and that sort of thing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we were only two of, what was it six or seven? So it was Patricia, myself, Jaron from, from Jaronism, Bob from Globusters, uh, Nathan Thompson, from LA, Chris who's a, who's, He's got the largest Facebook group of any flat earth group, Nathan Thompson, just right. in case. Right, That's right, how right. people know him. If you're not on Facebook, you might not know his name. Right. And yeah. uh, who is it? Chris Pontius, of course, from flatearthmodels.com right. and the, uh, the ever <laughs> persistent uh, Matt Boylan. Uh, made an appearance in it, even though he was not officially interviewed by the team. They put together a compilation of some of his favorite rants and put that on as well. From YouTube. From, from YouTube. Channel. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun. So anyway, the point was we saw it. Uh, we're we're two of a very, very small amount of people that have seen it so far. It has also made it to the Los Angeles Film Festival. I think that's coming up in two weeks, officially going to be there. And then it's also going to be at the Denver Film Festival just before the conference. And I know we'll talk about that in a while. And it was also admitted to the Melbourne Film Festival down right, in Australia. Right. Which so oh, four, four, yeah, four four film festivals so far. The, the LA one was probably the biggest surprise because the LA festival is not a documentary festival. It is a full blown film festival, and there were only eight slots for the the documentaries, and and that one got in and, and wow, really surprised indeed. the producers. So, if but, I had um. When I, because I saw it twice, you know, both times with Mark. The first time was in a hotel room, basically, not right. in the theater. If I had just seen it and not been involved with Flat Earth, not been involved with any of the things I know now that I didn't know several years ago in 2015, I would have found it very entertaining and interesting. And that's what the average person off the street who knows nothing about this topic will find, something entertaining oh. and interesting. But yeah. later, they may go home and think, wait a minute, these people seem so nice and sincere. They're, they're not crazy. Maybe I might look into this. Yeah. And I saw it, the, by the time I got to the, the finish the second showing in the theater, and I, I had advised the director not to announce that we were there, but he was pretty insistent. It's like, no, no, it'll be good. And I was like, okay. So after the film was over, you know, when, when it comes to film festivals, the directors, you know, the people involved go up on stage in chairs. And we were not asked to go up on stage. They would just announce that we were there. But once, once we were announced, the audience questions kind of turned rapidly to where they didn't want to talk to the director and the producers anymore. 
they, they wanted to talk to us. And it wasn't really hostile. I mean, we got it to, to the point where they had to shut the thing down at the end and move us out of the theater because we wow. had all the, all these globalists that had questions, a lot of questions. And in fact, mm-hmm. the only hostility we got from that little thing that afternoon was from one of our own, from from a flat Earth member who was in the audience, who who saw it and and said it wasn't you know it wasn't a pure flat Earth movie. And it's like no no it's not. Yeah, it wasn't about Earth. the science. Why would you do something like this? And yeah, why they, why would you be part of this movie? I answered him that they said that they were going to follow us around and find out more about us, and you know that's what you're going to find out. Yeah. Most people involved in flat Earth, you're not going to find them on a day to day basis from dawn till dusk doing experiments. <laughs> they they right. eat, they they laugh, right. they cry, yeah. they Regular socialize. <laughs> right. Yeah, we. Uh, it, 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 and it was it was what I thought it was going to be. You know, it's, it follows a standard documentary format, whereas you set up all, you know, you set up all the characters, you kind of show little bits and pieces of them, and then you get them all together at the at the main conference. And that was really how it ended, with the exception of the, the Jaren experiment thing at the very, very end. But it followed pretty much what, what I thought it would, because I was there for probably 75 percent of the shooting. I, we, you know, they took me down to Salem, Oregon for the great American eclipse, which was absolutely magical and down to LA, which, okay. So we were, oh boy, you know, I, I, I'm going to keep, I'm going to confuse myself if I go any further on this one. So anyway, the point was, we are, what Mark's trying to say is we've gone so many places and done so many things. Sometimes they overlap and I can't remember they, they are overlapping now so yep. <laughs> so the point was is that i'll, I'll let, let me transition over to the salt and sea thing so the salt and sea experiment was never supposed to be a, a really heavily flat earth engaged type of event it was it was done because there was a little podcast out of california out of los angeles called oh no ross and carrie who had interviewed me at the end of 2017 and they were uh, they were science fans and they worked on me for two hours during that interview and were really frustrated that I wouldn't give up my belief in flat earth like that would happen. I mean, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I had been doing it for a couple of years at that point and you're going to talk me out of it in a couple hours. It, yeah, right. That's never going to happen. So they decided to get a hold of a skeptics group and there's not that many of them out there and there's several in Los Angeles. And they grabbed one. They said, okay, we're going to do a long distance photography test first thing in the morning out at this Dead Sea, which is uh, east of Los Angeles by a couple hours. And I'd never even heard of this place. And most people hadn't because it is, it's a Dead Sea. Nobody ever, nobody lives out there. It's, it's really just out in the desert. And I, I said, well, I don't want to, they, they said, would you like to witness the test? And I said, no, no, it's a, it's a terrible test. We don't do this test anymore. And, uh, I, I don't want to do it. And so we, uh, Patricia and I were up in Toronto and what had happened before we got to Toronto was right after the, the skeptics group wanted me to go to this thing, uh, national geographic called me up and they said, Hey, is there anything happening? They're, they're kind of late to the game. And it's like, hey, we want to do a production thing. We want to follow some flat earthers around. Uh, is there anything happening? And I go, well, there's the Denver conference. And they said, ah, it's too far away. Get anything sooner. And I said, the Canada thing. Uh, nope, nope, nope. We're not going to do a Canada thing. There's international stuff. It'd be really messy. And it's like, um, well, how about, um, you know, there's a stupid thing da- happening down in Los Angeles, the Salton Sea. And they say, oh, that sounds interesting. And I go, yeah, but I'm not going. So let's just, you guys, you and the LA people can get a hold. I, I really try to stay away from this thing. And when I was up in Toronto, they called and they said, hey, what what if we uh, make it all expenses paid? You know, you, you come down. <laughs> it's like, I don't really want to. It's like, come on, it'll be fun you, you don't have to do anything you can just you'll we'll just interview you you'll you'll ask you'll respond to whatever their test is and i go okay but i'm gonna hate it i'm gonna hate the whole thing so i drag patricia into this <laughs> it's like, hey patricia come out of the desert <laughs> be fun it's going to be over 100 degrees and you have fair skin and burn and pass out in the heat. <laughs> what? Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, Toronto, Toronto was fun, but the, the salt and sea thing was not so much. But there, we did have, you know, for everything, there is a balance. And there was it was really, really wonderful because uh, this is where I'll segue into this. Um is that we? They also asked, "Hey, can you do a National Geographic?" Geographic asked if we could do a meetup in Los Angeles. I like, okay, sure, let, let's do a meetup. So we did one in Arcadia, 
and about 100 people showed up and it was really really great and uh nat geo was was out there shooting and uh the, the couldn't have gone better uh rob skiba they fl- the los angeles group flew in rob skiba uh the flat earth group not national geographic and and just it was a blast it was the 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 three of us and you know this this fantastic la flat earth community and that was that was a blast and then we um sorry i'm looking at the chat thing and after that we had the day off the the very next day off because the the salt and sea test wasn't going to be until was it sunday morning i believe yeah i think i think it was i think it was sunday morning 4 a.m i think we started driving in the dark to (sighs) the middle of nowhere where the yeah and i will say this I will say this because they, they were asking me, it's like, hey, can we get like a few people to come out to this thing? You know, some flat earthers. I'm going, look, you're asking flat earthers to get up at four in the morning on a Sunday to drive to the middle of the desert after probably drinking the night before. <laughs> Are you really? I, I, I go, I'm embarrassed to even ask them. And so I didn't. I did not ask anybody uh, at that meetup if they were going to really go. I, I wasn't going to press anybody. And it turned into Field of Dreams. Where we get out there, and all of a sudden, these this stream of cars were showing up, and we wow. had I don't know, 30, 30 plus flat earthers. We we represented bigger than the eight man team that Nat Geo brought, and the skeptics group brought, and the local media brought. Oh, nice. we, we were there in force, and we were critiquing that test to death. To where after they were gone, we went back and and did the test. I don't know three different ways. Uh, and it, it was shot uh, a bunch of different different ways, and um, National Geographic asked some tough questions, and it should be released. I'm mentioning all this because it should be released in the next month. So check it out. We'll, we'll make sure we spread the word around, but it should be on National Ge- Geographic television. I don't know if it's actually going to make it into the magazine. They took enough still shots, and they have enough content. They could absolutely do a magazine article on it as well. Uh, what was the, the test? The test was just a, a long distance, your your garden variety, long distance photography test where you're shooting uh-huh. across nine miles of water. And can you see the beach on the other side? Right. And you shouldn't be able to. I mean, there, there should be right. a, a bunch of curvature. And they, you know, rookie mistake on their part where they waited too long. You know, they should have they should have had this test up and running before 530 a.m. And they did not. They 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 did not do any dry runs. They thought, okay, we'll just do it live first. You know, f- first let's out of the gate. And they didn't even have the first photography stuff ready until about seven thirty, pushing eight o'clock. And the sun was already up, and the the lake was heating up really really fast. And there was a massive amount of distortion, and we were losing visibility on the shoreline with every ten minute increment. And, you know, we didn't do any time lapse or anything like that. We probably should have. Uh, but I, I pointed out as many times I beat the drum as hard as I could to the, to the Nat Geo guys. But they claimed, oh, so, no, we, we couldn't see the balloons until it got up to a certain level. It's like, well, actually, you could. We spotted the balloon. You couldn't even find your target. They like, for example, they didn't even know nine miles is a long way away. They didn't even know where to look on the beach for their guys. Because when you're looking that far away, you know, a lot of landmarks look look kind of the same. And we spotted it with our cameras and said, oh, yeah, they're right there. And they said, well, you can't see it. It's like, of course we can see it. There's no curve. Of course we can see it. And right. Yeah. So anyway, that was the, the salt and sea test. Um, should I mention, Patricia, the little extracurricular thing real quick or not? Well, yeah, sure. But first, I just want to say for those who are kind of unsure of what Nat Geo is going to put out there when they do, they're mm. going to say that this test proved that the Earth is a globe. But in reality, had you been there, you would see right. that because the people that were doing the test started so late, it was so hot, and uh, the visibility changed during the time we were there where we could see clearly, then we couldn't based on the fact that it was very hot and the water had those little wavy things above it in the atmosphere. And they said that that was because of curvature. And we, of yeah. course, said, no, it's obviously moisture. It's the environment. And yeah. they, um, the, the Salt and Sea crew who, who went out there, you know, that live in L.A., went out there. I believe two to three more times and they yeah. used Excellent. infrared yeah. later. And with the infrared, they were successful going out early enough to yeah. get the proof that we all know that we don't live on a ball. 
But yeah. Nat Geo, well, they got sent the footage, but will they use it in their article or will they stick with what they saw that first day? Uh, it's, a, it's a tough call. I don't know. I mean, we the, the point is, is we don't do this type of test anymore like that. You don't. I, now, granted, we figured out a very clever way to punch through the atmospheric distortion, and that was using mirrors on the other side and infrared cameras. Right. But usually you do it at night. You do it with lasers like FE Core did over at that lake in Hungary. Uh, you you do it in cold weather. If you ever can, if you can just use lights and no lasers, you can do it in cold weather because that will reduce atmospheric distortion almost down to nothing. But you don't do it in 100-degree weather on a thermally uh, compromised lake that is already at 80, 90 degrees, the, the water temperature. It was just brutal. Uh, it's, it was – anyway – the point is, is that they, what will National Geographic do with it? We will find out soon enough. And either way, the exposure is still worth, worth the stretch. So, um, so I'm sorry, I know you got like five minutes to break. I gotta, I gotta throw in this extracurricular story real quick. So the most unusual thing, cause you're saying anything strange happened. Yeah. Something strange really did happen. That was during our day off between the test, between the meetup and the test, we had a day where we weren't doing anything. So we went out to dinner, a little intimate group with some of the flat earth, uh, LA coordinators. And during that Patricia, who had posted a nice picture of her meal at the restaurant on social media. Uh, it got picked up by one of the people that was at the meetup. And he, this particular man, uh, was related to a Hollywood celebrity who wanted us, Rob and Patricia and I, to come up to their place in Palm Springs for drinks. And oh. so we did. And we talked shop, just the three of us, and this particular Hollywood icon with extended family for the better part of three hours. And uh, he, it, it's fascinating, fascinating uh, conversation to where I, the part, of course, that sticks out the most to me was when he asked me, he goes, hey, he goes, hey, Mark, do you want to know how I found out about it? I was like, sure. How, how did you find out? And he said he found out at the Oscars this year. Uh, during, an, uh, during, during an Oscar party after the Academy Awards where there were a lot of, uh, and I won't mention the names, uh, yeah, any yeah. of the names, but where there were a lot of people in the room and they were talking conspiracies and this uh, A-level uh, celebrity female comes in and actress and says, no, 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 let me tell you, you know, what my father's into. And she lays out the whole flat earth thing for him and, and that's how they got into it. And so it's, very it is, cool. it is very big, very, very spread out. Um, and then on a quick side note, cause I know I have time. I'm looking at the clock. The, yeah. uh, when I got home, my cousin calls me, she's uh she's a hedge fund. She's a banker's wife out. Um, she lives all over, lives in California right now, but she was in Manhattan at some little wine bar thing with some high level, uh, wall street hedge fund guys. And one of them is the CEO of a, of a big hedge fund company. And they were talking conspiracies and she's not into flat earth, but they happened to bring up flat earth. And she, and she said, Oh yeah, my cousin's into it. Uh, his name, you know, his name is Mark Sargent. And they absolutely <laughs> knew who I was. They knew who everybody in the community was. They knew all the concepts and they even, uh, you know, granted they had a few glasses of wine in them. They even took a, a selfie, you know, she, well, she took a picture of them holding up a, a, a phone with the AE map on it. And, nice. I can't, I, my hands are tied. I can't show this picture to anybody because <laughs> this, this particular, this one guy is, is high enough profile that it would actually probably reflect on the stock price. Crash the uh, stock market. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. It would make the Wall Street News, the Wall Street News in, in two seconds. And I, I can't do anything with it. It's like, all right, well, that's great. But it, it let me know that, that Flat Earth is the coolest story out there and there is no demographic there is no grapevine it cannot work its way into because again it doesn't matter how, how rich how powerful how talented how beautiful you are flat earth can fit into your group flat earth can work its way into your conversation somehow because it's so huge and and just so darn interesting so yeah that was uh that was and that was just what happened between that was just that one trip <laughs> i know Basically. and you know the uh the uh Hollywood A-lister's house that we went to and spoke with he and his wife with Rob Skiba and Mark and myself. Um, a lot of people say those in Hollywood are all Satan worshippers and all that. This guy is a an admitted uh, uh, 
a Christ believing deep Christian. Yeah. He even recommended a book for me, which I have now. So his, he's not what you, sometimes maybe the things that we've been told about everybody who lives in California, everybody in Hollywood isn't indeed true. A lot of these people are really, actually they have, they have feet of clay like the rest of us. They've gone through a lot and some of them either always were Christian or had spiritual beliefs or uh, are are that way now. So, you know, yeah. it, it, it was really great speaking with him. He, he appeared, um, I don't know if we even should have said he, to be a very normal person, nothing weird, nothing creepy, very normal and very yeah. interested and very on the ball about all aspects of all of the various what we call conspiracies that we talk right. about. Right. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, you can't generalize everybody. Yeah, there's everybody's individual. We'll be right back, everyone. All right, welcome back, everybody. And for those that don't know, this is the song that just went off is called Ezekiel's Will by Destiny Lab, and we will be putting out a book of their lyrics uh, very soon. Uh, and so, just wanted to catch everybody up on that, but. Uh, let's go back to, did you want to say anything else before we move on to the Canadian conference, either of you? Well, or any um, other special news or current n- events? Or During the break when that song played, in the side private chat I wrote to Mark, I like this music, the song that was just playing. I really like whenever that one plays, the sound of it. it sounds yeah. like I want to hear the rest of it. Uh, I'll send you a disc of their music. Uh, actually, I'll send you both. A disc of their music. They're my favorite band. I love all their, all their stuff, and I think you'll really dig it too. So, cool. Um, one more thing I'd like to add because again, so many things are happening that I, I tend to just push, push the minor ones out. Uh, you know, was that we also went to a uh, another meetup down in. We probably should mention the Shane Dawson thing. Um, oh right! Wow. Oh my gosh! I know, right? Because <laughs> because you know that happened. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the one of the biggest YouTubers in the world, uh, his channel is called Shane, and he did a conspiracy compilation video where he dedicated a full twenty minute segment to Flat Earth, and he and I mirrored that 20, 20 minute segment on my channel, and I mean he got it's up to like seventeen million now, but he got fifteen wow. million hits. In, yeah, I know. He got 15 nice. million in, I think, the first two weeks. He's got a huge following, massive following. He's got 17 million followers. And oh, I didn't no. even know this kid existed Crazy. because his demographic is from age 12 to about 20. So okay. if you know anyone from 12 to 20, uh, I guarantee you they know who this kid is. I have not I have not brought this guy up to, I say kid because I'm old, um, <laughs> I, I have not brought this guy's name up to anyone in that bracket where they didn't know who he was they may not be a follower kind of like when we were on the we were on that elevator (laughs) at the canadian conference and these two girls were getting out and because they were very up to speed on youtube channels and i said oh yeah shane dawson he's on the 12th floor and and they they absolutely took what he is really and i go i you should check it out you know as the doors closed it was great i love torturing (laughs) but he um so I, I mirrored the video, and his brother was the the big conspiracy guy here. Uh, in the video, he calls me, and I'm thinking, oh great, we got some copyright thing, and he wants to call me up, and and because I get that every once in a while, you know, if somebody uh-huh. calls me and it says, will you put pull the video? I, yeah, sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. But he says, um, any chance you're going to be in LA? Because we'd like to kind of extend this and and turn it into something else. So Patricia and I, it's like. All right, here we go again. So we go back down to Los Angeles and we meet up with Shane's brother. And uh, DITRH also flew down for this and we did a whole nother meetup. Uh, you know, same same people who were organizing it. So this time it was in Pasadena. And while we were down there, uh, we met up with said Hollywood icon again, we went, out, went out for dinner with him and, and uh, talked shop for another three hours. And, uh, but then we also got a chance to shoot, uh, at the, at, it's, it's so surreal, but it's, it happens, you know, we got to shoot the very video we had watched that, that gotten 15 million hits where it was shot. We shot in that very, you know, studio apartment type thing that they had set up because studio space 
is so limited in Los Angeles, as you can imagine, that people will buy houses and apartments, anything with a high ceiling, and they will convert it into their own little private studio. And that's what that's what these guys did. Shane shot some of his stuff out of there. So nice. we, uh, Patricia got interviewed, and I got interviewed, and DITRH got interviewed, and that segment were, is still in the editing process, and wasn't that long ago, and we're going, because we did that, we did that literally, and that's a good segue, we literally, we squeezed that in, we flew home from that shoot, and had a day to unpack and unwind and repack and then head straight up to Edmonton, Canada. We're jet setters. Yeah, we're jet setters. <laughs> Not really. Yes, are. No doubt. But, but that's but it was true, true story. And we we had to do it. That was the window. They they said, you can't, you know, can you come down? It's, it's like, you know what? Normally I, I would have said, I can't speak for Patricia. Normally I would have said, no, I would have been too tired. But it's like, you know what? When when they call, you know, when some when an opportunity like this arises, you you can't say no. You just can't, you, you, the exposure was, was totally worth it. And I, I hope the piece, he got enough footage out of it. And plus he, he spent the greatest, greatest part was he spent the entire meetup with, uh, the, the LA community and Uh interviewed a whole bunch of people. So I, I hope some of it gets used. That is fantastic. And he's pro flat earth too, Shane, his brother, he understands it. He understands the element of God. He understands all of the, th- it's crazy when you meet people and they understand this stuff. It, I mean, I, it should be the norm, right? But it isn't. Right. And when it happens, it's really mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's, as far as videos go, if you type in flat earth and YouTube and you sort by view count, uh, you know, Vsauce is always number one at like 20, 21 million. But in second place now and gaining on him is this Shane Dawson video that's now up at 17 point something million hits. And and it's pro flat earth. So good for him. Uh, you know, grateful that he did it and grateful that uh, that they kept a real open mind. And it was it was a lot of fun hanging out with with Jared and his group down there. That's amazing. I can only see, you know, um more and more things happening from that and especially if he's reaching that age group that you said 12 to 20 oh my gosh yeah he he fantastic he he planted the seed in a lot of young minds a lot of them you could the videos that came after that where people you know the reaction videos are so popular nowadays reaction to shane's video and and because shane comes off as so genuine you know, he's such a, such a nice guy that the people, you know, it's like if, if Shane's talking about it, I, you know, it, it must ring true. It's like, okay. Yeah. It's, yeah he great. grew up a little bit like a lost soul with yeah. a, with a troubled childhood and he shares all of those things on his channel. And yeah. so he's won the hearts of a lot of young people who themselves have gone through a lot and are going through a lot. So uh, the people that will watch his videos aren't just watching it to get some laughs. They watch his videos to, to learn, to empathize, to, um, bond with him. So it's, he's like one of the most perfect people to bring flat earth to young people. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, yeah. There's, there wasn't a, a, an inkling of skepticism. You know, when, when he and his brother were talking, they were, you know, at the end, of course, they were saying, you know, they didn't want to be labeled. They were saying, does that make us flat earthers? And they're going, well, no, but but at the same time, they really enjoy the flat Earth concept, and uh, it was it was a it was a great it was probably one of the best twenty minute compilations I've seen. Very slick editing, and it covered all the the major points, which was which was fantastic. Nice, yeah. nice, uh, and especially you know again with the demographics of that age group. They are the ones that will research and right. look into and examine all of this. And they're not yet so hardcore indoctrinated into belief uh, as far as, you know, because they're skeptical now of everything. The whole American dream is collapsing around them, you know, and right. so they're having to seek um, just At- happiness, joy from somewhere else. Yeah. True. And they uh-huh. will bring this up to their friends at school. That's also a big difference. Where, yeah. as you know, when you're adults, it's like you, you're afraid to bring it up to your spouse or your friends or your coworkers. And kids, kids talk. You know, right. I am. I I wish I was a fly on the wall at all these schools all over the place where it's like, yeah, did you see Shane Dawson's video? Yeah, man, he's talking about flat Earth. 
Isn't really? it funny how children or young people in general aren't afraid of being judged as much when it comes to out of the box ideas? They right. may have, you know, body insecurities, sexuality insecurities, and those things that we go through when we're teens and such. But when it comes to thinking about different topics, most of them are not afraid. What year? What year are they? What age are they when the clamps go down on them and they feel like they've got to, you know, step into line and not step right. out again? Would it be you know right after high school graduation maybe usually it's right after university uh, because because when you get to university all of a sudden the the gloves come off for a while and you've got those four years potentially if you make it all the way through those four years of being exposed to things that your family doesn't really have much control over and also you've got that college debt to pay off and you've got to get that good well, job and yeah. you've got to well, right. that's yeah that's a little different yeah when we when back in our day uh, <laughs> when when you could pay for a semester of 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 college with couch money uh you know that was stuff you know stuff you would find in the couch cushions it was that it, the, there was not much pressure, but you're absolutely right. Nowadays, when the kids come out of uh, school, they've got a six figure debt. And it's, I, I, I literally I have said it before. I cannot imagine being 21, 22 years old coming out with a six figure debt. It would it would just cripple me from uh, from a, a psychological standpoint. I, I wouldn't know yeah, what to do. No. With it. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Uh, the other thing with regard to, you know, the so-called higher education is that um, they are so indoctrinated during those years um, and those are really still formative years but then they get molded you know they get molded to toe the line and they get their paperback degrees and they think that uh, well every this is what we've been taught in the colleges and so I know different and better I know because I took uh, astronomy for three years and, and as my science in, in college and I thought I fully understood all the dynamics of world and, you know, how everything was as far as the cosmology. And then, wow, when I learned, you know, that there was no curvature, that right. just that one thing forced me to reassess everything. But uh, it was difficult for me to even overcome that indoctrination to even give it possibility, you know, to even... Uh, entertain the idea that uh, that you know, I could in any way be wrong, you know, because right. college education, you know, I mean, but anyways, um, yeah. yeah, and so, yeah, let's, um, let's go into talking about, um, because I watched, uh, and it was really all, all of these speeches and the round tables, I really liked the way that Robbie did all the round tables with everybody this time and Patricia you facilitate so well um, you, you really have a skill set in doing that as far as um, you know facilitating these kind of round tables and everything but Mark your speech was epic brother I wanted to give yeah. you uh, <laughs> yeah if you would talk a little bit about the challenge to scientists and the uh, you know as far as the video that oh was made. right um, yeah, there, so what happened, you know, I get called from, from different, I, I, I do a lot of interviews, but I got called from a big German television group. I think it was, but, but I'm going to screw this up. Is it ZDF or 2DF or whatever the logo is? Uh, but anyway, it's one of the big ones. And they were trying to put a segment together, uh, a television segment, and they said, okay, we, we heard your initial challenge that you debate any scientist or any group of scientists, you know, one on five, you don't care about the odds. And it's true. It's not my challenge anymore. Now I've got an even better one, which I'll probably die over. Uh, <laughs> but but this one was, I, I said, look, just give me a chance to, to talk to a scientist. And so they got a scientist from, an astrophysicist from Georgetown University. And but what they didn't want to do, because as you know, most scientists are not very good uh, public speakers. They're they, they can't debate very well. They're, they're just they're just brains. Right. You know, they're super nerds. And so they said, OK, here's what we're going to do. We are going to record you asking some questions. We will play him your recording 
and then we will record him with his responses and and we will go back and forth like this that way nobody's talking over each other and it's compartmentalized and go you know what that's fair sure why not and that way we can think about our answers there's no pressure we don't have to we're not live or anything it, why not it's, it sounds very uh, very civil and so they say okay you start you got to you got to ask five questions it's like all right so i i they go but it's got they got to be scientific in nature I'm like all right well, and i hadn't really done that until that point you know the the clues were kind of ethereal you know they were they were thought experiments but they really didn't get into a lot of um, sciencey stuff and so i but i wanted to make it easy to understand for people because I mean, the average person on the street is not going to know a lot of hardcore math or, or equations or any particular scientific discipline so uh, the, the the questions were were pretty easy and i don't want to uh, I'm not going to read them the whole thing. I'll just give you the the, the quick rundown. So uh, the first one, I won't I won't read you the speech, uh, you know, because these were I'm I'm looking at the thing from the speech. Um, first one was long distance photography, which is uh, you explained to me how that ships that supposedly go over the horizon can now be brought back into frame using digital zoom and and HD technology. How is that possible? You know, and if they say it's an illusion, well, you know, I've got military guys that'll say they, they can target these these boats with weapon systems, with direct, you know, sight point to point beam radar. And we can we can actually hit these things with, with right, the with, rail with, gun. Well, not just the rail gun, but the sparrow yeah. missile system. I mean, you right. can't you can't target a mirage with anything. Right. You, you can't paint. A, you can't use a high powered laser to it, it'll go right through a mirage because remember, the mirage isn't even there. Right. Right. Um, the second one is the power of a vacuum, vacuum versus gravity, which is how is how, how how does the space station work? If the space station is just plastic and aluminum, how does the the immense pressure difference between the inside of the space station and the nothingness on the outside, how does it keep that space station from just blowing the thing apart? How does that happen? Because remember, the opposite is uh, the submarines. Submarines can only go down so far, and then they hit crush depth. Because, and they're made out of very, very strong reinforced steel. And you have to have special, special um, reinforcement to even go deeper than that. So how does, how does that happen? The vacuum doesn't work. Can't, can't, can't want, cannot work the way it's advertised. Uh, the third one is the eclipse shadow. More of a three-dimensional experiment, which is uh, if the moon shadow, you remember the great American eclipse of right. last year, was um, uh, it was only a 70-mile wide blackout zone. That's really, really small, considering the moon is 2,000 miles wide. I mean, you're, you're talking about a, a, con, a convex focusing of, uh, uh, of, of the shadow from 2,000 miles down to, to 70 miles. That's 97% uh, decrease. Where do we see this in, in any, anything else? Where do we see it? Uh, on top of that, so the, the addition to that, which I really didn't talk about in the speech, was that uh, if that was the case, what's good is good Good for the goose is good for the gander. The, the Earth, which supposedly is 8,000 miles wide, four times the distance, should cast a 250-mile-wide blackout zone back on the moon. So during a blood moon, sometimes we should see, you know, like a like an eye on it. We, you know, we should we should have a pupil. You should see this this blackout zone, which would be a tenth the size of the moon. It should be visible without even binoculars. We don't see it. Uh, the fourth one is moon temperature, uh, which is one of right. my favorites. We, yes. you know, how is the moon temperature colder? And then, uh, you know, how is the moonlight colder than the moon shade, which is the opposite from the sun? You know, it's 90 degrees in the sun. It's 80 degrees in the shade. Why is it 50 degrees in the moonlight and 60 degrees in the moon shade? Uh -huh. Should not be that way. No one ever talks about it. And then last but not least is the um, Van Allen belt trap question, which is tell me real simply. It's a yes or no answer. Are the Van Allen belts deadly? Yes or no? Uh -huh. If they're yes. Then how did Apollo eight through right. seventeen get through them? Right. And if they're and if they're not deadly, then tell me why NASA has a very very clear detailed video on their website saying yeah they're extremely deadly. They're so deadly we're not gonna we're not gonna send capsules through them. Um, and when I threw those five questions out, that was it. <laughs> that was the end. There the, <laughs> there was there was ne there was not gonna be a rebuttal. And the the Georgetown guy said yeah I'm not I'm not doing this. And uh -huh. the segment, the segment collapsed just immediately, and and that was the last. Uh, l nice. Luckily, I recorded it, and I I hid it from them <laughs> because they didn't want me to put it up on on air. But I so I just renamed it. the The thumbnail's still there, 
uh, and the and the audio is still there. But uh, yeah, that was that was my that's my only proof that we even that we even did it. Wow, awesome, well, good for you. You know, you. keeping a record of it. Um, yeah, yeah, but it was so. fantastic. I definitely recommend everybody check out the videos uh, and the speech that Mark gave at the Canadian conference. Uh, wow. Certainly epic. I think people will. Well, th- thank you. It was it was just my, you know, trying to to boost the morale of the troops, you know, because we don't get a chance to 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 call out science very much. And uh, my my test, I, I let me throw this in real quick, which is the test that I my new challenge because I can't get anyone to debate me. You know, initially it was Jeffrey Grupp. Jeffrey Grupp was the the original challenge, and mm. then it's like, well, he's 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 getting covered in dust and rust. So I, I said, okay, I'll do it, and you know maybe I, I would be a more enticing target, and that didn't work. So now my challenge is it's it's ground level, which is find me an astronaut suit, find me a vacuum chamber. It'd be nice if somebody else was in another astronaut suit because these things apparently are foolproof. They've they've never failed in the history of our our space guys ever. Our astronauts, you know, five 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 hundred guys never had a problem with an astronaut suit right. once, except for the guy that supposedly drowned. Almost or, drowned, yeah. Or was or was going to drown. Yeah. And uh, but the spacesuit should not work the way it should. I I did a clue on it called the lost nail, which says that look, a spacesuit, an astronaut suit, is just a thick balloon. No different than a basketball, no different than an automobile tire. That's all it is. And there is a ma- and we're and, you know basketball is is pretty tight. You know you 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 can't you you can grip it a little bit, but it's pretty pretty taut. Uh, and that's just a, a few pounds of pressure in that thing. So tell me how an astronaut suit doesn't get as tight as a basketball. And if it does, you know, and 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 if it, tell me how it doesn't. And if it did, how could anyone move their arms or legs or or fingers or anything? You, you there's no way. The astronaut suit cannot work the way it's advertised. And I'm absolutely 100% sure of this because I can't even remember. I'm a I'm a pretty clever guy. I can't even think of a fictional way to get that suit to work against the 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 power of a vacuum on the on the outside. I can't I can't do it. I can't think of anything short of you know force fields or magic. Something out of Harry Potter, maybe. Uh, the <laughs> current technology, no. But even future technology, I can't think of it. And it's never. Find me a document online that tells tells anyone how something in the backpack in 1969 kept that suit from go turning into a parade float. Tell tell okay. me how it happened. So anyway, that's my challenge. Excellent. You know, um, we had for the longest time the the challenge through Sacred Word. Right. Uh, for, you know, proving that the earth is moving or that there is any curvature. But really, we got so many just idiots and, and that was, would not listen uh, or would not hear anything that, you know, as far as you get them to even just look for curvature. But yet they refuse to do it and they come up with, you know, all the support from NASA and all the and I, I just got tired of wasting so much time yeah. uh, just yeah. responding and dealing with people like that so that I I finally took the challenge down. But um, certainly if you wanted to, uh, you know, answer and rebut and talk with all these people, we would certainly, you know, keep the money up there and keep the – the challenge out there. Uh, well, I just the, don't have the time to deal with all of it. What I probably should have told you, I didn't even think of this because I didn't know exactly the details of your challenge. Something I yeah. put in my original debate challenge, which was whoever it is has to have a master's degree or higher in a physical science. That uh-huh. that's the only qualifier I asked. I go, look, you uh-huh. got. I don't. I don't care if you have a, a master's in geology. Give me something, and most, and that's usually what stops them. Because any, probably smart, yeah. well, anyone that has a master's degree really doesn't want to risk the because right. uh, I, I, I I've had friends, you know, they said, oh, yeah, the, the, when you have that much education, you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be the person that's known, uh, you know, that you went up against flat earthers and you didn't <laughs> wipe, right. wipe the floor with them. Mm-hmm. And so they don't. They keep quiet and, you know, like no different than the Georgetown guy. He, he's like, yeah, not doing this. He, he, it, it's, it makes sense, though, from their standpoint. It's like, look, if you can't win, 
you better not go up against us because if you lose, you all of a sudden become a media um, uh, pin, you know, something right. you, you get, you go viral because it's like, oh yeah, this, this particular academic lost to some flat earthers. Here's what went, went wrong. You know. I'm the poster boy. Yeah, the poster boy. You don't want to be yeah. the, the Michael Jordan thing, the other guy in the picture. We need a, a Me Too in a positive way for the Flat Earth movement to start happening, which would be that whole, you know, who's going to be first on the dance floor thing, with right. one person getting out there and saying, hey, yeah, it is flat, and then other people saying, me too, I also believe, and then more and more and more people coming out. Right. And unlike the Me Too movement, it's not about something negative. It's about something positive, and it's strength in numbers. People are afraid to come out. People, right. um, like we talked about earlier, people that are well known, um, don't want to b- right now make themselves right. uh, and their names known. So, yeah. Yeah. right, but we're getting yeah. There. There's still yeah. negative connotation associated to it, um, but like you said, you know, more more people and individuals like Shane Dawson bringing up the the youth and getting them to to challenge and question. That's just gonna. Yeah. Uh, snowball effect. For oh sure. yeah, and and real quick, I know, but I know we're going to break here pretty soon. Yeah, uh, which is uh, I t- again forgot the little details. The guy that uh, there was uh, another Hollywood celebrity we can mention his name that contacted Shane Dawson because he watched his video, and that was Alan Alda from nice. Mash. Nice. Yeah, wow, right and, on. And and then he went on the View and and mentioned it. Mentioned really? that he wanted to so look cool. into Flat Earth and he wanted to talk to some of these people. And so we even invited him to the Pasadena meetup. He didn't show up, but we put the channels out there. He got the invitation. Awesome. Well, maybe some other time. Yeah. All right. We'll be right back, everyone, for a second hour. All right. Welcome back, everybody, for a second hour. I'm your host, San Garcia. This is Secrets of Field here on truth frequency radio and i have a special guest with me this evening both patricia steer and mark Sargent. um i wanted to ask you both kind of what you learned or what was new insight or what you thought was um as far as awesome uh or you know anything of remembrance from the canadian flat earth conference and also kind of what you've seen the evolution since the the Raleigh conference um because again i know both of you have your uh your finger on the pulse of all things flat earth and so if you would patricia let's start with you and then we'll go to mark well what i learned is that yeah we're in a different country we're americans we're in canada but uh, the people there are just as if not more so involved in this as as the americans are and I also learned that the more conferences that we have, the, I guess, better we get at putting them on. Well, Robbie D is the one putting it on, though. But he learned from the first one some, well, maybe that didn't work. Maybe we'll do it this way next time. And he put those things into action instead of resting on his laurels for this second conference. So the one that's coming up in November in Denver That one's going to be even more amazing and powerful because it will be a culmination of what he learned uh, in North Carolina and in Canada. So I I think that as we move forward with these and different speakers come on board, that the momentum and the excitement and the polish of the events will continue increasing. Yeah, absolutely. I fully agree. Mark? Uh, yeah, everything Patricia just said there. Uh, what what stuck out to me was how smoothly everything ran. Uh, not uh, polish is is a good word, but I don't want to make it sound like it's some sort of entertainment venue. Uh, it was we everyone has their role, and we seem to be settling into those roles. And so, whereas Raleigh, you know, we were just, just kind of winging it. <laughs> it was the first flat Earth conference ever. Ever honestly, the fact that we made it through that thing, the the Raleigh conference, without a major incident or a major technical malfunction or anything like that, uh, you'll give credit to to Robbie and his his crew. But when we got to Canada, it was amazing. You know, there was eight of us. There was um, uh, Rob Skiba, Patricia, myself, Jaron, Bob from Globusters, Emmanuel Lakanga from Controversy Seven, uh, Robbie Davidson, of course, and then Matt Long, and. Every everything just clicked. You could feel it click. 
it, there there wasn't there was no friction there was no grandstanding there was no uh, you know up upsmanships or whatever the uh, uh, no upstaging um <clears throat> it was really really smooth and everybody got their message across and the audience was receptive to all aspects of it uh and there was enough variety that and again, we didn't even, not that much of it was planned. I mean, I, I, nobody knew, like nobody going in knew what anyone else was really doing. Yeah. I, I, I didn't find out till like that morning. It's like, Bob, what you doing? <laughs> Jaron's in the, in the green room, you know, following me, he's going over his stuff and I'm, I'm kind of, you know, doing, doing my thing. And, um, by the time we, uh, we finished, I mean, there was, we, it was going so well that even when we got to Patricia's panel, at the end, and that fire alarm went off, which was the the only part really that didn't work so well. But that wasn't even the fault of anybody at the conference oh, no. or who put it together. It was no. a very smoky in Canada. There were fires, wildfires. So yeah, oh, well, yeah. And and and, and because the alarm system in Canada Can- is it's is not as yeah. severe. Uh, the Canadian bells, we should now refer to them as the bells, <laughs> the bells. Uh, they were these, you know, these chimes that, that happened every several seconds and then a uh, recording would come on. And because of that, we just powered through. I mean, we didn't need it. It's like, you know what? Everyone's still on stage. It's the last event of the, of the conference. Let's just do it. And, uh, so it was, uh, we had uh, Jaron and Bob and, uh, Rob Skiba and myself and Patricia up there. And did I miss anybody? No, it was five of us. And we just timed our answers and questions around the bells. And <laughs> it, it worked out amazingly well. No actually. one panicked. No one ran. There was no imminent danger anyway. It was a yeah. precaution kind of gone bad on the part of the hotel. Accidentally, the alarm kept going off. But yeah. uh yeah, we worked our way around it, which really shows how well not only those who are uh, speakers can handle adversity, how well the audience, the people who are there, because they truly believe that the world's not a globe and there's a creator. Everyone was willing to stay there and listen and yeah. participate without freaking out. And yeah. it just mm-hmm. we, it was very it was a very together moment. Right. Yeah. It, you, nobody, again, the sense of community was, was overwhelming. Nobody went anywhere that we were kind of even unified against the media. Um, and some ty- in some cases for the media, uh, the Canadian media is different than it is down here in the States. The States are much more Western gunslinger come in at any time. We could bring a two man crew or an eight man crew. We're going to hang out with you for a while. We're, we're going to embed ourselves with, with you guys like they did out in Raleigh you know there was I missed like the entire first day's sessions because uh, the media was just there were just this non-stop presence they were always wanting to talk to people uh, but up in Canada it was about getting their stuff done to where they could have it on the evening news or where or it was on the website by that late late afternoon early evening so most of the media was gone by by lunch <laughs> on the first day they just came in, interviewed as many people as they could. Now, granted, remember, this was Edmonton. This wasn't Toronto. Uh, this wasn't uh, uh, Montreal. Uh, it wasn't Vancouver. I think it would have been a little different. This was Edmonton. But it was still uh, amazing. We only had one incident, uh, and f- funny enough, uh, who cut in line at Patricia's side. So I was doing my Q&A. And there was a female reporter, and I forgive me, I do not remember the the name of the group. It was CTV. I don't think it was CBC. It was one of the, it was a major Canadian network, though. And she hated us right out right out of the gate. She did not like us uh, to to the point, and I'm going to butcher this is if Robbie's listening, uh, where she came up to Robbie and and you know on camera, and her first question was, "How does it feel knowing that all of Edmonton is laughing at you right now?" Oh my most, gosh. Yeah, and it's like what? And, and but you know he had you know if, if that's the look, flat earthers develop a thick skin pretty quickly. Right, so yeah. it's not not the first time he's ever heard this. Although it was the first time he'd heard this on camera. We, you know, normally they're supposed to be fairly objective. She was she was not she was not one of these people. So I'm doing my Q and A a little bit later that morning, and she comes in because I, I opened uh, the the conference. And she comes in and cuts in line, asks Patricia if she can cut in line. 
and Patricia being the greatest. She person. actually kind of didn't ask. She said, I'm on a deadline. Can I cut uh, in front of everybody? In oh a kind of rough gosh. voice. And I just thought, you know, and I asked the people that were in the line, because I was there kind of to greet them and help them get to the microphone and talk with Mark on stage. And everyone said, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. See, flat earthers were polite. The reporter uh-huh. was polite. Yeah. Yeah, I, and Patricia wasn't wasn't the person to come back and say something like, "Well, you want a compound Wait. fracture?" <laughs> 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 I got, got three words for you, lady: blunt force trauma. <laughs> Next, but, no, but she come, but she comes up to the line, and her question was, it was it was baited. She's she, I'd already answered a bunch of questions already, and and she said, "Hey, there's you've already dodged this question twice." And, you know, I want you to give me a straight answer, which was, you know, why aren't you guys, you know, charging Antarctica? Why aren't you, you know, heading to Antarctica? You didn't dodge, quote, I dodge. know, I know. <laughs> so but rude. But, but I think she, again, she was baiting me, trying uh-huh. trying to get me to be like, what what have I dodged? You know, trying to be, get me on defensive. But it's like, I, who cares? I wasn't going to I wasn't going to play that game. I just, OK, fine. We'll, we'll let's talk okay. about Antarctica. And I go into the Antarctic Treaty. And because I didn't take the bait, she didn't use that segment. You know, her producer, uh, uh-huh. uh, she, he didn't he didn't go over it. But Robbie, at that point, once he, he saw that she was still causing trouble, uh, he banned her uh, <laughs> for life <laughs> from, <laughs> from any conference at that point and made it very uh, public uh-huh. to where she mentioned it in her. Uh, he threw her out and and uh, uh, she mentioned it in her article and whatever. So that was the only trouble we had. I think with the media, the rest of them were really, really nice. And I've got to give a shout out to, oh boy, am I going to screw up his name? Was it Mac? Uh, the guy from, from Canadian Vice. Oh, I think it is Mac. Yeah. One of the writers. I think it was, I think it was Mac. Um, he was, so on top of having exclusively Canadian things, they also have the Canadian versions of American things like, uh, the, I just got, I did an interview with Canadian geographic, which is their equivalent of national geographic. I had no idea that was a thing. And they also have vice media Canada. And so, uh, uh, he was up there and he really was interested in, in the whole thing. He was, he, so he, he was really clear right off the bat. He goes, look, I'd really like to hang out with you guys. If you're going to do anything after the conference, I'd like to, you know, so if you guys are going to go out to a bar or restaurant, I'd like to hang out with you. And so he was our tag along for what was a group of six or seven of us, I think. Yeah. Uh, we had two guy, two two general members from Canada that were there. Uh, Matt, you, me, and um, uh, Rick Hummer, right? And then and then mm-hmm. I think this Matt guy. Anyway, the, anyway, the point was he he hung out with us. We we went to a restaurant and went to an eight, and then we went to a bar and uh, you. Know, we talked and talked and talked, and he asked so many great questions, and he hasn't put it out yet. So I'm very curious to see how the uh, the Vice Canada piece comes out. I think it's going to be great. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. Those Vice guys, they seem. Oh my gosh! It just fun. came out. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I was just really? googling. Nice. It's called "Fear of a Flat Planet: Inside Canada's First Ever Flat Earth Conference" with a big you, picture oh, of a sure globe Earth with a red X through it. Came out right. August 30th by Mac Lemoreux, L-A-M-O-R-E-A-U-X. Oh, crap. Hey, well, you uh, heard boy. it here first. Yeah. I'm, awesome. I'm going to look at it right now and see what it says. All right. Uh, anyway, go ahead and keep asking. Yeah, you're right. Uh, go ahead and ask, ask your other questions. I'll let Patricia skim through it. Okay. Uh, excellent. Yeah. So, uh, well, that's great. Um, and, and who else? Because um, I know that you guys do a lot of interviews anyways but um anybody else uh worth worthy of mention as far as uh, uh, doing documentaries or in any yeah, other yeah 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 um, as, as a matter of fact uh and i again I'm, I'm just going off the cuff here um i the guardian out of the uk who has run a number of flat earth stories ever since they caught wind of it back in 20 late 2015 they want to do a documentary as well and so they are going to be coming out to the Denver conference and they are going to, so we did like a preliminary interview and they're going to be, they're going to be shooting out here and, and doing that whole thing, which will, which will be a, a lot of fun. 
Um, other than that, I, I mean, good Lord, uh, so many. I, I don't know all the, the people. It Just about every, any Canadian group that was up at the conference, uh, any, any Can- Canadian media I talked to, including a couple internationals, which I don't, I, I, don't, I just don't know their names, unfortunately. Uh, but but I did, I think, six or seven while I was up there at that particular conference when I was just walking around the lobby. They're also not as direct. They didn't hunt me down as much as the uh, American ones do. Americans are way more aggressive, whereas Canadians, they were they like hope that you would walk within visual range of them. <laughs> it's like, hey, can we can we talk to you? We'd love to talk to you. It's like, OK, I, I think one of them pinned me down. I mean, I was not I was not hard to find when I was at this particular conference. The seating, the layout was different. It was done kind of a banquet style. Like if you were at a roast, you know, where you have circular tables all over the place. So instead of rows and rows of chairs and that that format actually worked out pretty well because people could, you know, set up shop. They could, you know, bring, you know, their their coffee or their tea or whatever they were drinking and they could kind of spread out. And plus it was kind of a, a little community building. So, uh, but yeah, the, the media has been great. Um, the only negative stuff we've run into recently I uh, and I don't know if you've you've heard some of the stuff that's been, that's been going on, but uh, YouTube has been kind of and Google has been changing some stuff recently uh, to kind of go along with the fake news stuff. Part of part of it is is because they they want to reduce you know the the um, uh, the stories about shootings and and false flags and stuff like that. And flat Earth can't get lumped up too much into it, but they did pull down the scoreboard from YouTube, which I still think it was directly related to the fact that flat earth uh, was trending faster than the president of the United States where I'd made a show on it on TFR where I, I literally the episode and you can look it up. It's not even that old. It's not even two months old. I don't think called flat earth passes the president of the United States. And we, we had beat him in the trends 20.9 to 20.8 million. And almost immediately afterwards, uh, somebody messaged me and they said, you can't look up the numbers anymore. I mean, what are you talking about? Uh, they, they, they said, when you go into YouTube, and, you, and you've probably seen this then, where you could you type in anything, whatever it is, whatever topic, potato salad, George Clinton, uh-huh. whatever it is, you'll see search results equals a number. Right? It's in every browser that's ever been put out there. Uh, that it's it's Internet 101, right? Anything that ever you can ever search for, it always shows you your search results. And YouTube was no different. It was there since the since YouTube was founded. That was removed recently, and I mean mm. gone. So where it's not like wow. search results equals zero or search results equals weird numbers or anything like that. The whole line where it was search results equals is gone, and wow, it's not like they did a major. They they didn't do a major overhaul of the interface. Uh, no, no, um, no big change to, to the layout. It, nothing like that. It was just, they just pulled it. They, we were beating them so bad and we were mentioning it so many times that they decided to take their football and go home. Mm-hmm. And I felt, I, I feel bad for some of the people that, that rely on those search results. I'm, I'm hoping that one day they put them back. I just don't yeah. see it happening though. They didn't even make an announcement about it. I just thought it was really, really strange. Mm-hmm. So, that is anyway. strange. Yeah. Well, I've just yeah. read the article, by the way. So, um, Please it, like it, it could have been a better article, I'll say. It's not bad. It says it's primarily a Christian movement and that nobody could convince the writer Mac that uh, the earth is not a globe. He kind of thinks we're all kind of lovable losers. But that's oh part for the course with most of these mainstream articles. So, uh huh. I well, like the I like the first picture they used of the um I'm stealing that one. The the one of the the final panel where oh, you're yes. you're in it. That's a good shot. The second shot, not so great. <laughs> from from the other angle. I won't I won't go into that too much. Uh of the uh, one of the participants. Yeah, well, I'm gonna share it on my Facebook and Twitter so anyone who follows me can can take that's a, a look at it. That's a big if, article. Yeah, but if uh you don't know to just look it up with um just put in Vice Magazine Canada and it'll come up. But uh, the title again, Fear of a Flat Planet Inside Canada's First Ever Flat Earth Conference. Mm. It's it's okay. You know, it, mm. it's, it's, it's just okay. I'm always disappointed. I'm like, come on, couldn't you guys do better than that? You know yeah. what? Uh, what do you expect? I, 
I'm still I, I haven't read it, but it's a bit it's a big article. There's lots of pictures in it. The the titles uh, fairly generic. So I'm going to and weird that we were talking about him and it comes out. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, yeah. I've been checking like as much as possible all the time for these different articles to come out. And so Excellent. Yeah. anything else pending? Hmm. I mean, well, as as articles go. Yeah, articles. Uh, uh, well, the, news, the news, National Geographic is probably the biggest one. Yeah, uh, uh-huh. that's the because yeah, we that that's going to be as big as the ABC News piece, which they re-released. Uh, it was interesting. ABC News and Vice they did the same thing. They they follow each other where they want to make sure it was still as current as possible. So they 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 made the old video private without tearing it down, and then they put they they reposted it. Uh, under a, I think a slightly different name, so it didn't look like it, you know, because you're not supposed to be, uh, to post identical videos, but, but uh, other than that, no, I'm not waiting for. I don't think I'm waiting for anything at the moment. I, I, I might be though. I can't remember to be honest. Yeah, I'm always thinking. So well, there's that on, one. Right? Well, yeah, yeah. Th- there's way. Yeah, there's and way. And things too much. overlap too. Well. We're yeah. actually waiting for Shane Dawson's brother to come up with whatever oh, yeah, that thing. he's coming up with um, uh, that he'll be putting on his YouTube channel. So right. hopefully that'll be, you know, fairly positive because he, he's uh, he I'm not saying he says he's a flat earther, but he's pretty darn close. Unlike this vice writer, you know, mm-hmm. who wrote this article. Yeah. Right. So that might be that might be cool when it comes the, to yeah the shane yeah the, the now hopefully my hope is that Jared, who's got his own channel, and of course, that's where it's going to primarily go. I would hope that Shane would use some of the footage, even though he was not there, and just do his own narration and do kind of a part two. Because, heck, he did get 17 million hits off of the last one he did. Right. So why wouldn't he Why wouldn't he do this yeah, one? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, you definitely think he would follow up. Especially, you said he's his brother, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's his, yeah. It's his brother, yeah, which is... And I know they use each other's stuff, and it's... It's going. To, I'm. I'm excited about the piece because he got a lot of great stuff out of it. I don't know if he's going to use as much from the meetup with the individuals at the meetup because he was. He was hoping. It was really strange. You remember this comment, Patricia, where he wanted to. Um, he wanted to get more out of them, but he felt like they were a little nervous because they didn't know him. They just knew he was media. So they didn't know, you know, they didn't know if they could trust him. And so the average person at the meetup wasn't, he, he thought they just weren't, they were holding back. And you and I are like, media? Sure. You want to talk about Flat Earth? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. What do you want to talk about? And they, maybe that's, maybe, maybe we should be more, you know, reticent to speak. Um, but you I know mean, what? They're going to write an article anyway. They yeah. might as well get the truth, even if they can right. spin it. As a much as, yeah, as much it's as you cr- can. Right. Yeah. You you never know. I mean, why why hold back? Uh, and, and honestly, there's been so much street activism lately. It's really been trending. A lot of people have been doing the street activism stuff. It's it's become a kind of a new thing where people are trying to out activist themselves. You know, in in different parts of the country and the UK and wherever else they're doing it. Oh, oh, sorry. There was one thing I I got to mention about the um uh, the conference, which you probably didn't know, Zen, which was that afterwards, uh, and this was done by Robbie Davidson, we kind of had a little kind of a speaker's retreat uh, after the fact where we went, we drove in uh, in cars from Edmonton out to Calgary and we stayed in a uh, Airbnb, a big, big house out there, what, five or six bedrooms in um in Calgary, and almost all of us went. I, I think the only person that didn't go, uh, well, the two people that didn't go was Emmanuel and Jaron. Jaron had to go back, uh, but the rest of us were out there. You know, uh, Bob and and Cami and and their son and Rob Skiba and me and Matt and Patricia and Robbie Davidson and Rick, and we had a whole bunch of fun. We went up to to Banff, and you know, took pictures and and did some some streaming from up there and. It was a beautiful place. the The weather was hit and miss, but it was a, a lovely, um, just a, a really nice, relaxing way to. We didn't sleep as much as probably we should have. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, you put that many flat earthers, you yeah, know, in a, in a right. room, 
and everybody wants to do something and everybody's, you know, we're, we're getting fed by media constantly. Plus you had uh, Rick Hummer that wanted to shoot, shoot footage for the roll and ready thing is, is mm-hmm. you know, you didn't want to waste a single moment. Uh, if he had his way, I don't think we would have slept at all, but we were there for, what was that two or three nights, three nights? Yeah, three nights, I think. Yes, I we think we went grocery shopping together. It was just pretty crazy to be grocery so cool. shopping with fellow flat earthers. We all have our own <laughs> carts and, and yeah. carts together, having breakfast together. It was like um that old MTV, you know, Real World or it was like right, right. It, was. it was like <laughs> real Real World Flat Earth. That's really what it was. It really felt like that. But we didn't we film were, it. But we should have. <laughs> well, we, we, we the thing was you you did a, a secret show from there and. Yeah, on so the, the the difference was is that in the old real world you had camera guys running around you at all times and in this case we had the cameras so we and also were... it was real and we weren't fighting no. <laughs> like, like no, in the we TV shows and no. that's why we could never have a real reality show flat earth thing because most of us that would be together on purpose like we were aren't aren't going to be arguing. So. You know, yeah, you're right. Patricia and I would joke uh, off and on over the last few years about how, you know, so much production value was wasted, but, you know, when there was, whenever drama came up. But what was interesting, and, and just fig- go figure, was when the documentary came out, for example, all the flat earthers were really, really nice. And all the scientists, the people who were against us were, were very cordial, you know, very, very nice. And so it's like, well, okay, well, you, we, you have to have a villain, right? You have to have an antagonist in the story. So who did they make, you know, but one of our own, you know, what? and, and they, they chose Matt, you know, Matt, uh, not Matt Long, but Matt Boylan. Boylan and right. they, they made him the villain. And and he well, was well. He made himself the villain. He made they, himself the villain. He but recorded was, right off his channel with him screaming about you and about me, right. not because of anything oh, we did God. to him. He it, was just it, screaming, and they filmed it and put him it, put it in the video. And only after they asked him if he would willingly participate in the video, and he gave a list of demands. Right. And those demands were a bit extreme. So the film crew, although we didn't know any of this until after it was made, no. Put the list of demands in the in the movie. Oh my lord! Oh, yeah, wow. we didn't even know. We didn't know there was. We knew the bulk of the people that were going to be in the in the documentary, but there were two people that we absolutely didn't know um, until the last minute. One was Nathan Thompson, and the other one was Matt Boylan. In fact, I, I had to find out because I read a, a Canadian movie review because you know there's some media that have watched this film. Canadian movie review. They mentioned Matt, and I I, I call up Patricia and I go I go. Is Matt in this? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't think so. Uh, and, and it turns out he's not from a... He didn't sign any release forms. Oh, crap. Oh, We're uh, on the break. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, all right. We'll be right back for final segment. All right. Welcome back, everybody, for final segment. It seems like uh, we're in a time warp and things just uh, goes by so quickly. Uh, but I had mentioned to Mark, uh, it seems like Flat Earth is like this year's Bitcoin. Uh, and there's so <laughs> much conversation and that it is being discussed everywhere. And yeah. we don't even know how much. But um, anything with regard to the media um, and people, you know, different shows. And you said you mentioned Alan Alda, but uh, yeah. anybody else of um, significance or any? Shows uh, or unfortunately, not that we can say. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and a lot has happened since Raleigh. I mean, I can't believe that that. Uh, I mean, we still have a few months before the next conference, but uh, everything that I have run into, all the people I have run to so far, and they've all been unsolicited. I mean, like the the Hollywood thing that uh, the icon, the the Patricia and I and, and Rob Skiba got a chance to. It was again un- completely unsolicited. We don't know these people they they just contacted us and they all say the same thing whether it be wall street or um the entertainment community or the sports community it's traveling everywhere because let's face it when it comes to just personal interaction with each other once you get past the small talk i'm I'm not talking about your your intellectual conversations i'm talking about you know people on the street once you get past the weather let's talk about the weather and sports and politicians and stuff like that once you get past that 
the conversation usually boils down to somebody telling an interesting story. In fact, they'll even preface it with, oh, yeah, I heard something interesting the other day. Really, Fred, tell me about this interesting thing. <laughs> I heard something, too. And you'll exchange a few interesting things if you got something. And what I have – everyone has told me is, is that Flat Earth is the most interesting story currently out there. Period. There's there's nothing more interesting than it because it opens up your mind to a whole. Even if you come at it sideways, you get to remember uh, the 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 celebrities that we ran into. They were hearing it because somebody was coming down coming down on it because they had a family member that was into it. So even if you're spreading even if you're spreading the word by doing it in a negative way, it's still spreading the word. You know, it's kind of right. like this weird right. virus that, that gets out there that spreads whether or not, you know, just accidentally, kind of like 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 spreading a cold. You don't even know. It's like, oh, you got this crappy cold. Why are you in this elevator with us? You know, and all of a sudden you infect everybody <laughs> in the elevator. <laughs> but, but yeah, it has been, uh, I mean, just an amazing year so far. And we still have, uh, I suppose we should eventually segue into the whole Denver thing because uh, you are going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to uh, finally meet everybody. Um, yeah. 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 Well, you, and I, you and I met down at the, uh, the right, Atlanta thing. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. But I, with the rest of the community. Yeah. Most certainly. And and I still tell that story. Did you? I, I think I told you that you know, when I was down there, when we went to the bar um, uh, for lunch uh, during one of the mm-hmm. breaks, uh, that the bartender was into it. Right. And, you know, she came up and then the Homeland Security guy, when I was checking my bag, leaving Atlanta, right. he right. was into it. Uh, and and I've run into more and more. In fact, the, the story I, I haven't told a lot of people was when I was flying out to the Canadian conference. And I was in a shuttle, an airport shuttle, and the woman next to me, who just felt chatty because she really didn't travel alone very often, and she, you know, she asked what I did, and I said, "I'm look, I'm into flat Earth, blah blah blah," and she, you know, she says, "Tell me more," and and I give her the whole nickel tour, and at the end, she goes, "Hey, do you have a card that I could give my babysitter?" And I said, "Your babysitter? Why? Why?" And she goes, "Oh, she told me about flat Earth four months ago." <laughs> I go, wow. I go younger really? person there we go right yeah. yeah and so and and it's like well one that that flat earth is harmless enough that even though her babysitter's into it you know this is a person that's watching your child it's mm. not scary in any way to where it's like yeah you can't watch our kid anymore you know, it's nothing <laughs> it's, it's nothing like that uh, it's true. I mean, flat Earth. It's it's why we survived in in social media for as long as we have, because it it doesn't feel dangerous. It's really positive. Right. I mean, there's right. there's flat Earth music and there's tons of flat Earth art and flat Earth memes, and we've had I don't know a couple hundred meetups now all over the country, all over the world, and there hasn't been a single incident. Nobody's nobody's even gotten in a fight uh at, at any of these things i mean yeah you get a little tempers here and there but it never comes to blows because it's about the idea it's not about the person i mean yeah you may not like flat earth but you're not gonna you're not gonna knock somebody out because he's bringing it up to you uh it's it's amazing and so yeah i'm so i'm sorry let me rattle them off real quick because i i know you probably haven't done this yet so there were eight of us at the eight speakers at the Canadian conference and for the American conference, there are 14, uh, Rob Skiba, Patricia Steer, Jaron, Bob, Irulanducci, DITRH, D marble, Robbie Davidson, Zen Garcia, of course, uh, me, Matt Long, Dave Murphy, Karen, B. Karen B and Emmanuel Lakanga. Awesome. So, should be a lot of what lot could of go wrong. <laughs> what could go wrong there? <laughs> no, it's going to be if if uh, and I've told Patricia this a few times. If if Canada was any indication of how Denver is going to be, it is going to be amazing. Uh, there, everybody everybody brings something new and different. You know, it's such a wide variety to the table. We've got two different tracks of speakers. So if you if you really don't want you know the heavy Christian track, you can always go the secular track. You know, not gonna you're not gonna get criticized either way. Uh, it's at a great location, centrally located this time out in Denver, and uh, you know, right, really close to the airport. I mean, this time it really is close. I mean, it's I think it's barely eight miles from the airport, and the road it goes straight there. Uh, and I, it's I think uh, Rob Skiba's opening. 
he's going to be opening this conference. I'm opening the the second day with uh, my Q and A stuff, and everybody else is uh, going to be bringing some great stuff. Like I and and a few of these guys I have not met yet. Uh, I have not met Dave Murphy in person. I don't think. And uh, Karen, I don't really know her very well, so <laughs> I, I don't even know why I even talked to her. Uh, but no, it's it's gonna be cool. I got like I got a chance. The great thing is we've already met so many of these people that it it now it it feels like a well oiled machine moving forward, and it's I, I it's only gonna get better from here. I'm I'm just mm-hmm. so excited about it. Everybody's getting really really pumped. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, you know, again, the whole snowball effect and the most incredible thing about this particular topic and this particular issue is that the deception, uh, the all encompassing deception that this, you know, the whole heliocentric Copernican Darwinian model. And when you wake up to that and then you come to terms and actually open yourself to this possibility and finally, you know, allowing for it to be uh, your truth, embrace it. Uh, Just the uh, paradigm shift that you have to go through and then the relevancy, you know, that it brings to your life as far as waking up. It's like totally, you know, waking up from the matrix. Uh, We feel like Neo and all of that, that small crew of, um, being disconnected from all of that and right. wanting to help others to, you know, make sense of world and really come out of all of those lies. I mean, it, you know, like when we all first woke up to nine eleven, and yeah. that was a very scary thing, you know, like, um, yeah. that government lies and that they sponsor terrorism and all of that. But this, it helps you to really, um, really learn you know again those kind of things but not so much as far as the black ops and the whole terrorist side of things just that nasa and government and the whole conspiracy of all these uh space agencies and different groups working together to perpetuate the lie is just so massive it's really just mind-blowing but it is it is, but at the same time, uh, it was one of those secrets that was never going to be able to be kept forever. Right. Uh, it it was it was too big. It was right. something so big, and and anyone that's listening to this for the first time, you got to understand that human beings had nothing to do with this. It was the only thing we did was try to keep the secret for longer than it probably should have been. I think I really, really believe that we were going to find this out eventually. And naturally, and that the powers that be, you know, lucked out and they found it first. And when they did, it's like, yeah, you know what? Let's hold on to this a bit longer until we can figure out what to do with it. Like they would with with a lot of secrets. And it was and now, you know, perfect timing. If you believe in the plan and you believe in, in you know, synchronicity and, and everything for a reason, uh, there's a reason oh, why certainly. it's coming coming out now and how everything seems to be going into place and even even the fact that science is not def- you know which is why part of my speech was calling out science you know just putting them on notice saying look you don't want to fight back fine whatever's going to happen this is all on you from this point forward if you are not going to mount any sort of organized defense against us we are just going to rack it up at, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to march across the field and regardless, fine. You don't want to show up. You don't show up. And, the, and they're not, they're still not. <laughs> that's the part that's mm-hmm. killing me. We put challenges out there and they're so afraid of risking their academic credentials. They spent so much time being indoctrinated. Indoctr- right. They're willing to bury their head in the sand just so they don't risk losing that indoctrination. Oh, uh, they're just, so scared of that. Yeah, they, they, they. Some of them, yes, will be dragged, kicking and screaming. And I know I said this years ago, which was, you know, anyone that has a master's degree or higher in a physical science is going to have such a hard time when this uh, becomes yeah. inescapable for them when it's being brought up to them all the time from from people. Right. I mean, yeah, they're probably just going to crawl into a nice bottle of scotch. And uh, <laughs> or in Neil's case, probably a three hundred dollar bottle of wine, and 
Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, yeah, it's amazing. I, I'm just, I have to pinch myself some days, even now. And say, like, is this really actually happening? And, uh, and it is. Patricia? I'm always wondering what's going to happen next. It's what I'm always thinking. When is the big thing going to happen? The big one. Right. When right. are we going to get that article or something happening with some famous person talking about flat earth in a very intelligent way that wakes the masses up. What's going to happen? Or will something happen before that that would be involving the government or something else that takes our mind off, not our mind off it, but the larger group of people off looking into things like this because their 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 personal safety is at risk or they're unable to feed their families like an economic crash or some kind of war um, right. i don't i don't really know what's going to happen and it 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 keeps me awake at night really i mean i'm i'm very excited about where flat earth is going but then i sometimes feel like it's not going fast enough something needs yeah. to happen right. Right. i mean at and I agree. I absolutely agree with with you on that, Patricia. But at the same time, every just about everything that's happened to us so far, uh, we didn't we didn't see the the little the subtle nuances of it. You know, where where every time I think that's like, oh, you know, is is this is, is this as far as we go? And then all of a sudden, something some new wrinkle, and you know, something where all of a sudden you realize, holy smokes, it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's the part where. Uh, and I, I really don't want to miss this point. I was going to save it to the end, but but I might as well say it now, <clears throat> which is, and Rob Skeeper reminded me of, of this, and that is, the, you're, everybody that's listening to this broadcast now, you, you're walking by Flat Earthers every single day. Right. Absolutely guaranteed. There are millions and millions and millions of them, but you don't uh, you, you don't recognize them because we don't have unless they're wearing something really overt like a like a T-shirt or a hat or, or carrying a flag. Uh, you don't know because they look like everybody. You know, they are everybody. And to where the uh, uh, one of the reasons I should bring this up real fast is the uh, the reason why National Geographic came out and visited us was because they saw the article it was done by a scientific research group out of uh, the UK called uh, u.gov and they did a survey of about I don't know 9000 10000 Americans to where they were asking them what their opinion was on the shape of the earth and they were asking very specifically for you know the flat earth angle and when they got to and most of the numbers they were going on you know, like 3% 4% blah 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 and which was amazing on its own. Remember, every percentage point in the United States is 3.3 million people. That's a lot, right? Mm-hmm. And the same sort of thing in Russia. But then they got to the 18 to 24 year olds, and it was over a third. That really surprised them to right. where a third of them, a third of the the 18 to 24 year olds, it was way beyond the curve, the bell the bell curve, were did not believe in the globe. In, in some capacity. And that, I mean, you ask any scientist that the, when you're that far in deviance in, in terms of numbers, they've, you gotta have to, you have to have an explanation and they right. didn't have, and they didn't have one. And they were scrambling to where there were some articles that were posted just a couple of weeks ago where they were saying, well, they did the research wrong. <laughs> it's like, you're talking about it's it's your group. It's a professional scientific research group. These guys are like a trusted source. They, that's all they do is go out and do these census, you know, collections. And that was, so yeah, there's tons and tons and tons and tons of flat earthers out there in every demographic you can think of. I, I don't care what color you are. I, I've said this yesterday with Patricia, I, um, but flat earth doesn't care about uh, race or gender or religious preference. Flat earth welcomes all. Yes. And, and it's, and it covers everybody, you know, the only thing bigger than flat earth is God. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I mean, and it's directly related. Yeah, so exactly. what do you, you know, what are you going to do there? I mean, there's nothing, there's no place that flat earth can't go. Flat earth is obviously in the halls of the highest tier of media, uh, where, uh, you know, the people that run social media, it's in the government. It's it's in places where, you know, yes, they're watching us. Yes, they're listening to us. And they don't know. I don't know exactly why they're making some of the moves they are um, other than and I'll end on this because I know I ramble. Um, whereas they they seem to be trying to control it the way you would control a forest fire, 
where you 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 butt up against it in some places and other places you let it run but the ultimate uh-huh. goal is to kind of shape the fire hopefully hopefully in the way you want because as you know right. any little thing goes wrong with a forest fire and then oh, crosses a road and you're screwed yes. but that's what they seem to be doing in some cases some places they're just not fighting us at all and then other places in social media they seem to be trying to curb our enthusiasm like there's a timing issue here like they they really concerned about exactly they've got some sort of date in mind where they're drop dead date it's like okay we can only fight it for this point and no further and they seem to be you know trying to to like putting the brakes as much as they can and it's fascinating to watch and when patricia doesn't sleep because she thinks of certain things that's what i think about when i go to sleep Mm -hmm. and that does not help me sleep much (laughs) that's a really good metaphor for the movement is that it is a wildfire you know and they're trying to put in all these fire breaks and control it and keep it from going this way or that and yeah. then god is just pushing it with the winds this way and it's just you know it, it's yeah. exploding and burning and crossing highways and you yeah know, just yeah. you can you can only slow it down so much because you remember the media feeds on itself Media right. feeds on other media. They're they're really cannibals in the, in that aspect. To where like this Vice article, you know, great. You know, I'm sure you know people mm-hmm. people know about Vice, and this this Vice article will be because it's different now. Now you don't even have to add, you, all you have to do is make one email. It's like, hey, can I use parts of this? And nobody says no because they all want the exposure. All you have to do is yeah, all make right. sure I get the make sure I get the tagline. And so this Vice article is going to be reproduced. So the question is, how much of it? Where where will it be reproduced? Who mm-hmm. will pick up on it? Uh, will they, and will it be, um, carry over into the Denver thing? I'm hoping for a lot of buzz before the, the Denver conference. Right. That'd be, a, yeah. that'd be really fun. I, I think that's going to happen because even that study, um, you know, where it shows one third of the, uh, kids, you know, in the yeah. younger generation that they already have doubts, uh, that is most certainly, uh, influence from the YouTubes and the videos and all right. the work that you and Patricia and so many others are are doing uh, in putting out content and and serious content, uh, right. you know. And I think that one of the things that we need to do as well is that you know, how Patricia was saying, you know, looking for that really serious piece that yeah. we need to start creating that. Even we have, you know, Robbie and others that are just really so proficient at creating uh, just incredible documentaries. And so uh, that's coming too. you know, there's going to yeah. be very creative people get involved and that will make the movies, the documentaries, uh, write the serious articles. And it's just, you know, especially when they wake up to the deception, um, they're just going to want to help others to do the same. Yeah. Uh, Patricia, yeah. I want to give you a chance to comment too. And then well, we'll go I'm- back to you, Mark. I hope that we get a documentary uh, different than the one uh, behind the curve that is more, yes, Mm -hmm. I'd like to focus on the people because that connects the viewer with other, another human being and makes us uh, seem more relatable, but also on the science and, you know, the curvature and the spiritual aspect on a much deeper level. I would hope that documentary happens soon and maybe it's a documentary uh, that could get into a film festival that the flat earthers have to make. Sure. Right, exactly, yes. Just like you were saying, I don't know how we do that. I'm not a filmmaker, but right. th- there's got to be filmmakers. I mean, I know that Robbie does that sort of thing, but something that yeah. takes it off YouTube and gets it into a film festival, maybe exactly. even gets it on eventually Netflix, you know? Right, a big screen. Yeah, could yeah. you imagine Scientism Exposed on Netflix or, you know, something like that? Wow. It we should could- be. Yeah, exactly. Like loose change market. Yeah, we could also use a a cameo or two at the Denver thing. That's what I'd really love to see. I mean, it's 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 perfect timing for it. Uh, you know, we we've already done it once. Denver's a great location. You can come in from anywhere. You kind of know what you're getting. You know, there's not there's not an air of of mystery around it. It's like, oh yeah, Flat Earth Conference. You know, it's a thing now. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, that's usually what happens when a conference becomes established is you all of a sudden start getting people as, you know, higher profile guys like, oh, yeah, come here. Right. Just checking it out. You know, th- who yeah. knows? Maybe 
if if they know the routine, like, oh yeah, I'm not a flat earther, but I'm here to check it out. Right. One of those deals. I'd love to see some some higher profile people show up. It'd be yeah, like they, Dragon Con one day. Yeah, yeah. Dragon Con. <laughs> yeah. Well, they just I mean, might be too afraid too by putting themselves out there. Right. Even if they're, quote, just checking it out. They might right. be labeled a flat earther, and then they would be afraid that their career could tank because yeah. not enough people are out on the dance floor yet. Right. right exactly. And and, and don't exactly. forget the full the first documentary is not even officially out yet. That's the, you know, it's, it's just now, you know, getting into the, the film festivals and I, you know, as much as I'm, I'm probably more impatient than Patricia is, uh, I, I so wanted to be picked up at Toronto and just, and just run, you know, run with it. But at the same time, everything, everything for a reason, I believe in timing. So for whatever, there's, there's something else that, you know, it's, it'll come out when it's ready, but I have no doubt exactly. it's going to eventually come out. Uh, yeah. Yes, the flat earthers will have a hard, a hard time with it because they they want a you know a complete blowout. But at the same time, I know because I was in the audience, you know, with, with Patricia when when we saw it, it uh, it really put a lot of alert in people's heads to where again that those first twenty minutes watching it with a full a full theater, first twenty minutes you could hear people giggling, people you know doing the whatever mm-hmm. you know stuff, and then by the 30, 40 minute mark, they're like, wait wait, what's, what's going on here? This is, this is like a real thing. And I, I got to share this one story because I know we're going to come out of here pretty soon. Uh, real right. quick, which is um, even the editor, Patricia knows this story. The editor uh, of this particular film, the documentary Behind the Curve, he was showed it. He screened it to one of his friends who was also an editor in, in, in the industry. And the end, he didn't tell his friend anything about it. He just let him watch it. And at the, friend, at the end, his friend goes, wow. He goes, what sort of budget did you guys have to hire all those actors? He goes, where, where did you find all that? You know, all these, 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 these extras. And he goes, no, man, there were no actors in this film. This was all real. Nice. And it just blew him away. He's <laughs> like, what, what do you mean? You mean uh, this was this conference that wasn't, it wasn't a piece of docu fiction. It was a real conference. He goes, yeah, man, nice. I was there. He's like, oh <laughs> man. So yeah. 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 Heavy. All right. Yep. Well, real quick, uh, website, contact information, and then sure. Patricia. Um, it's, uh, what's the name of my channel? Oh yeah. Flat Earth That's and other it. hot potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot for a second. Uh, yes. And, um, yeah, it's on YouTube and I would hope that anybody interested would subscribe. I feature interviews with flat earthers of all sorts and, uh, the video interviews date back to the rebirth of the modern day flat earth movement in 2015. So you can find out all about people that maybe you take for granted as being on YouTube now and, and learn their, their backstory, where they came from and how they got into it. And, uh, once again, you can also find flat earth and other hot potatoes as a community page on YouTube, excuse me, Facebook. (laughs) (laughs) Mark. Cool. Uh, Flat Earth Clues, just Google it or put it in YouTube, Flat Earth Clues, or you can email me directly. I'm just going to give you my email address, which is M, as in Mark, S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at Comcast.net. Or you know what? Here's my phone number, 303-494-6631. Same phone number I've used. Just call it. Hey, from the whole community and myself, we want to thank both of you for all that you do. You guys are on the front lines and really waging battle and I think winning the war and more and more people are awakening to this daily and both of you are part responsible for that huge awakening. So cheers and kudos to both of you. Thanks. Thank thanks you. for thanks for having us. Yeah, that was yeah cool. my pleasure. And we'll we'll pick it up again. We'll do a follow up again. Uh, Robbie will be joining us uh, in a couple weeks, everyone. God bless all. Good night. Bye. Trisha, you still there? Yes. I'll buzz you. Okay. Bye, Zen.